Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Carob Spice. Today's video is all about my journey as a small business owner. I have gotten just a couple of requests with people asking me to share why I started my business, how I started my business, the challenges that I've had, and where I project um, my business to be in the next few years. So I thought I will put a pause on all of the fitness content and um, just kind of talk about Beautiful Exfoliates. So Beautiful Exfoliates started back in 2018, just about a year after my first daughter, Abony, was born. And it came from a place of necessity. So, you know, when you're pregnant, you get like all these crazy hormonal issues. And even though I had really glowing skin throughout pregnancy, after pregnancy, I started having some issues. And you guys know this because I share, I share quite a bit on my channel. So, um, I started just kind of uh, working with my own materials at home whipping up whatever I had in my um, bathroom, in my kitchen, uh, to address those issues. Because, you know, at the time I was still breastfeeding, I breastfed for like two years. And um, I don't know if it was just like a, a like overlap from pregnancy, I was still having issues with certain scents. So I was not able to really use products from the store. Anyway, fast forward about three months after using my own stuff, I noticed an incredible difference, a noticeable difference in my skin, and my friends even started telling me, wow, they're so, um, well, impressed, I guess, with the improvement. Because I'm telling you, my skin was really, really bad, especially on my face. My, I had like this pregnancy pigmentation on my belly, which is fine. I wasn't, you know, bothered by that. But then, um, looking at my scar, I had a C-section, I had two C-sections, but my first C-section healed up pretty well, and so did my skin, my skin tone. Um, so they, you know, I was encouraged, um, especially by my mom, to really consider starting up a small business where I can share these products, okay? So that is the start of Beautiful Exfoliates. It really came from a place of necessity. But then, as the business grew, I really thought about you know, my kid, um, it, again, it was just Abney at the time, and getting her through um, school, and hopefully she has some, she will have some plan to further her education after high school. So I was thinking about funding. So the business went from the necessity of wanting healthy looking, glowing skin to more like a funding, um, I don't want to say extra income, but, you know, really the funding for um, Abney's higher education. I foresee that in the future, I will definitely um, pass on my business. I now have two daughters. So Amara was born last year um, and I will try to encourage them. It may not be skincare, but I will encourage them to pursue a small business, um, entrepreneurship and um, any, you know, just like investing and investment and so just to secure the future as well. But I can make a different, a separate video on that matter. So um, when I started off, I didn't have much capital to start off with. Um, my products did not really look as attractive, you know, regarding the packaging of the product, but the product itself was very good. So. I am forever grateful for my first customers, the people who took a chance on me and tried the product and actually gave me valuable feedback um, and the people who really pushed the products when they were not looking as attractive. Again, I didn't have much capital to work with. Um, in case you're wondering how I learned about, um, you know, skincare and products and things like that, my background is actually chemistry. So I teach chemistry. I'm a chemistry teacher. That's what I do. But um, skincare is really a passion. Now, I have several passions. You guys know that. Fitness is one of them. So I had to later on uh, rebrand the business into body care. So under the body care brand, um, Carob Spice Fitness and Beautiful Skin, um, 
I have, uh, you know, two aspects of body care, okay? I went with the name Beautiful, um, Beautiful Exfoliates. Beautiful has been something I've been talking about quite a bit on my fitness channel. Be you, be the best version of yourself. So I was looking for a name that would kind of go with um, that theme. Uh, so Beautiful Exfoliates. Why did I choose Exfoliates? Um, I'm the queen of exfoliating. I don't do it excessively, but I do feel like some people do not do it enough. Um, we can argue around that, but exfoliating is important as as much as applying sunscreen. Um, you know, that is how you encourage new cellular growth, collagen, etc. Um, but that's a whole different lesson for a different days. So that is where that came from. I didn't just want to say beautiful skincare. Um, so I went with beautiful exfoliates. You know, that word beautiful there initially, initially. Um, when I started off my business, I was very nervous, but before putting any products on the market, I actually sent out some test products. You always test your market, right? So I sent some test products, got some feedback from friends who would give me the honest feedback. And so I was able to reformulate and um, get really good products going. My mom was my very first customer. I was so mad. Well, man, in the sense that, you know, I wanted to gift her some of my products, but she went ahead and placed an order on Etsy. And when I saw her as my first customer, I would never forget that. You know, the point I'm trying to make here, my mom has always had my back. You know, my mom is my, my, my person, you know, you, everyone has that person. Um, so as far as, um, how I started selling, so I started off in person at farmer's markets. I, I know that sounds like a task, but I was really, really excited about my first farmer's market because I wanted people to touch my product and experience, well, products and experience my products. And so that gave me the opportunity to network, to get ideas, to get feedback. And I always enjoy going to farmer's markets. I really, really do. I did that for a solid year. Um, I did a couple of farmers markets just to get my name out there, and that that really helped tremendously. Um, after a year, I decided to kind of um, focus more on online sales. That also did very well. My Etsy shop picked up very quickly. Thank goodness for reviews. Um, there were mistakes made along the way. Um, when you put a product out and you send it, so once you ship your product, you really do hope for the best, right? So you're sending your body butters and so across state and, you know, in the heat, your products might melt, things might happen, containers break. And so there were those issues as well that I had to work um to work around and to learn from. There are times I send products out. There are a couple of times specifically to specific people where I felt like my products did not get to them in the best of conditions. So I had to use that as a learning exper uh, experience. Um, and you know, those things happen. And so you learn from your mistakes, you learn how to tailor, you learn whether or not you want to do a refund or you give the customer the option. So you learn a lot. Um, during the pandemic, of course, you guys would imagine um, some business, some businesses blossomed and some actually um, struggled. I can think of friends who had to shut their business down. And I can tell you there were times that I wanted to as well. Um, it was a tremendously difficult year for me. You know this with my pregnancy journey and then having Amara in the NICU. I hardly had time to even focus on anything regarding my business. So they got to the point where I was really discouraged. I was not inspired. I wanted to shut down my shop, even though people were making requests. But um, I also used uh, that opportunity, you know, the pandemic, to try to um, learn and grow. So I enrolled in a few courses. They were offering these courses online by um, various university, like um, um, Penn State, you know, there several university. I know Ron did a course with Harvard. Um, I did a couple with different schools trying to learn about marketing and financing and just different things that would help me with my business. I wasn't really interested in learning my content, like, you know, the chemistry thing, I really wanted to learn more about business and marketing, marketing and reaching out to people. So I went ahead and I did those courses and I really learned, um, from taking those classes, 
how to apply various strategies, um, uh, new ideas, how to retain customers. And so from there, I can sincerely tell you that I felt like my business improved. So um, I know I keep this very long. I'm probably going to turn around and show you some of my products. I will link, you know, include the links to my business page. So I have one, I have an Instagram for my business, also a Facebook page. So you can um, like the page and support as well. Um, as far as where I project the business going, I would definitely love to um, get to a place where I'm giving back to the communities. I do not refer to my business as a hustle. Okay. I do not refer to my business as a hustle. I literally have to pay um, taxes on my business uh, every quarter. So I do that um, through the Texas Comptroller. I do have a license. I do have permits. I went through the right process to really legitimize, legitimize my business. Um, I went through the right steps because I really didn't want my business to come across as a hustle. So um, during tax time, for example, Etsy would send you all of the paperwork and I have to include all of that on my um when I'm, you know, filing my taxes, all right? Even YouTube, full disclosure, if you're a content creator, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm trying to not get shut down. I'm trying to do things the right way. Um, so that's about it. Um, definitely uh, check those links um, below. But I do wanna say, if you are thinking about starting a business, um, really put some thought into it. You know, try to figure out what you like what you want to do, what you're passionate about, what you're good at. Okay, so that's the first thing, because I know there are people out there who have so many ideas, but they can't get started because they're just all over the place. You really have to figure out what you like. For me, I know I'm, one thing I'm passionate about is body care. So as you can see, the fitness and then the skincare part of it, all right? Um, the other thing I would encourage you to do before you start making products so that you're not mismanaging your money, your capital, is to um, test the market. Okay, I did that. I can tell you my best seller from since day one is my coffee scrub. People like coffee scrubs. Um, even people who do not drink coffee uh, buy the scrubs and, and, you know, the coffee scrub has been a best seller from day one. Um, followed by the body butter. So you constantly have to test your market. It may mean that you have to send out samples, give samples to customers when they buy on spot or in person. Okay, so that's the other thing. The third thing, do not um, limit your learning. Always try to um, keep up with what's new, keep up with, again, going back to testing the market. Um, try to figure out how to retain, build customers, how to improve your products. Sometimes that might mean you are going to create a new label, you're going to package differently, you're going to offer something with shipping, you're going to offer, um, I don't know, like bogos, so buy one, get one free or discounts or, you know, just however you want to do that. You always have to keep yourself updated because, um, the point is you're trying to, to work and make a profit, but that would mean that you need to know what people want. So they constantly buy. All right. And then, um, something that I'm learning. Okay. Sometimes you are going to feel like your business is stagnant. It's not moving anywhere. And I don't say that lightly. You will get to the point where you probably question whether or not it makes sense to even continue doing what you're doing, or if you should, change something and it may mean that you do need to change something um it may mean that you need to do a relaunch that is something i have learned recently i felt like things have slowed down so much i felt uninspired i mean gosh you even saw it on youtube right um but it may mean that you need to rethink and reintroduce yourself reintroduce your product and big businesses have done that before so i don't really feel bad about that at all it just shows that you are open-minded and you're trying to go with the flow the trend so that is another thing so that's it that's all i have um being a small business owner you know can be really challenging but it can also be very rewarding um the last thing i really want to highlight i was highlighted in a magazine, an international magazine in May. So last May, May of 2021. 
and I felt really good about that. I got some recognition for my products, so I'm going to put that link below as well. Um, I did not reach out to the magazine. Actually, a, a someone, a customer, um, felt like the products were so good, and so she um, reached out to the editor of the magazine, and then she told me to reach out to the editor, and so we had this, um, we got in touch, we communicated, and things kind of took off from there. So I felt really, really good about that. Um, that is always very encouraging. So if you are um, enjoying the video, of course, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Let me know if you have a small business um, and let me know what you think. Maybe you can offer advice as well in the comments.